I'm Penny Reed, and you're listening to the AT Tips Cast. Hey, honey, I was thinking of trying a new intro to the podcast. Want to hear it? Chris, we're late for this Halloween party, and I'm not even sure we're walking down the right road here. Are you sure this is a shortcut? Sure, I'm sure. Don't worry about it. You're just nervous because it's a dirt road. I know where I'm going. Now, do you want to hear the new intro I'm toying with or not? Sure, I guess so. Anything to take my mind off these creepy woods we're walking through. Next time we take a shortcut, though, it has to be filled with rainbows and unicorns, not scraggy trees and thorn bushes. Deal? Anything you want, bud. Now let me know what you think about this. Don't hold back, either. I want to know your honest opinion. Welcome to the AT Tips Cast, investigating and exploring different implementation of assistive technology in public schools. I'm your host, Chris Bougay. This is episode number 22, recorded on October 19th, 2008. So, what do you think? <laughs> um, Chris, you just switched exploring and investigating around. That's not such a big deal. If you really want to change it, then how about something like, Welcome to the award-winning AT Tips cast, exploring and investigating, and so on. Yeah, I guess I could do that. What was that? Nothing, just some animal. Nothing to worry about. Chris, how do you always talk me into these things? This is like a scene out of a scary horror movie. What are we doing walking alone on a desolate road surrounded by dark, eerie woods? Come on, bud. Don't be scared. I think it's all those Stephanie Meyer books you've been reading lately, letting your imagination get the better of you. There's nothing to be scared out. <laughs> there. Oh no, Smarty Pants? You sounded pretty scared there. Maybe you're the one letting your imagination get the better of you. Maybe it's all those Scott Sigler books you've been listening to. You're supposed to be the brave one here. You know what, bud? I think you're right. We might be lost. M maybe we should turn around. You know, if you had just let me use Google Maps before we left, I could have plotted our whole course, and we'd be there right now. Google Maps? How could Google Maps have helped us? The same way it helps teachers with CBI trips and field trips. CSI trips? Teachers plan trips to crime scenes now? Who do they think they are? Grissom? No, no, silly. C-B-I. Community-based instruction. It's when you take students out into the community to work on their goals. Oh, right. Like to work on money skills, communication, or really any sort of necessary life skill, right? Right. Google Maps can be used by teachers for lessons before, during, and after CBI trips. You know, you could even call that AT tip number 34. Google Maps for CBI, if you wanted. Maybe. Let's talk about it. At the very least, it'll get our minds off whatever might be lurking out in those woods. Google Maps is available for free by going to maps.google.com or if it's easier just go to www.google.com and click on the word maps up in the top left hand corner of the screen. I'm going to guess that most people have used Google Maps before. I use it all the time when I need to get directions to some place. I just click on the get directions button and then type in my starting point and destinations. That's right I said destinations plural. You can add as many destinations as you'd like by clicking on the Add Destinations button. If you don't know the exact address of the destinations, it's no big deal. Just enter in as much information as you know. Google will offer suggestions to help you out by providing a list of what you might be looking for. Once you've selected your destinations, click on Get Directions. And voila! A route is laid out on the map and step-by-step -step directions are listed. But this isn't a tutorial on how Google Maps works. It's on how you can use it for community-based instruction. A good community-based instruction lesson will have a pre-activity, an activity to do during the trip, and a follow-up activity. Google Maps can be used for any of these phases of the trip. For example, you could plot a route they are going to take from school to destination or destinations and back to school again. Google calculates the distance in miles or kilometers and then the time it takes to complete the trip. Students could try different combinations and routes trying to find the quickest or shortest route. You could even choose different modes of transportation including the choice of by car, walking, and by public transit. 
Using this feature, students can compare which modes of transport would be fastest. If you really wanted to get crazy, students could compare the actual mileage of the trip to the estimated Google mileage by noting the odometer on the bus before and after the trip. For students working on money, the current price of gas per gallon could be researched and miles per gallon could be calculated to see how much money the entire trip cost. That's a great idea. I guess students could also have an active part in selecting the destinations themselves. For instance, if traveling to a certain town for restaurants, entering in the name of the town plus the word restaurants results in a Google map of the town with little lettered raindrop looking pins all over the map indicating where the restaurants are located. Students could click on a raindrop, read reviews of each restaurant, get directions, and, for some destinations, even take a look at a street-level view of what the restaurant looks like that can be used for matching purposes later during the trip. Following the trip, students could write their own reviews of the restaurant and add them to the Google map for others to use. Awesome idea! And you know what else we could do? By clicking on the More button and selecting Photos, the map will display pictures of the surrounding area. Students can then use these pictures as landmarks along the way. Furthermore, these pictures could be used as a writing prompt for a summative story that could be completed after the trip. That's another great idea. How about this one? On the morning of the trip, students could use the traffic button on Google Maps to see if they could expect any heavy traffic. Students could count vehicles they pass in a minute to estimate a vehicle per time ratio to make a determination about how heavy the traffic was during the trip. Students could estimate how much time was spent in traffic and compare that to the time as estimated by Google. That's a cool one. How about after a trip? Students could be provided with a map of the area using the satellite button. Students could either individually or collectively label the map for certain landmarks such as town names or street names. Once the map is labeled, they can check their answers by clicking on the Show Labels button under the satellite. I'm sure there are other creative uses for Google Maps that can be used for community-based instruction, but these are just a few. Using Google Maps can be a fun and interactive tool that has functional and practical applications far beyond just academics. Students who learn to use Google Maps will learn a tool that will help them succeed in their life outside of school. Well, bud, you're right. That is a pretty awesome tip. I think I'll add that as a tip and add some screenshots of some of the tools up at the blog site, attipscast.wordpress.com. If we make it to this party, that is. I'm so glad you think so, honey. When you do the next podcast, don't forget to tell people about the award the AT Tipscast won from the Teacher's Podcast, Best Professional Development Podcast. That's pretty awesome. Aren't you supposed to be on their podcast sometime in the future? Yeah, I definitely will mention that award because I was completely honored and flattered to receive it. Mark Gura and Dr. Kathy King host the Teacher's Podcast, and I definitely want people to listen to their show. Episode number 27 is where they announce the winners of their third annual podcasting contest. They talk about the AT Tips cast about 15 minutes into that show, and the whole thing is really quite an honor. And like you said, I'm going to participate in an interview with them coming up sometime soon, assuming we make it out of these creepy woods in one piece. In the meantime, people can check out their podcast, website, and even link to their Facebook group. And while they're there, people can join the AT Tippers group, a group of listeners to the AT Tips cast. That's cool. I'm on that, too. Come on, scaredy cat. I think I see the house right up there. Isn't that a light up ahead? Yeah, you're right. It is a light. See, I told you I knew the way. I knew we weren't lost as soon as we passed that motel. What was it called again? You mean the Bates Motel? Right, to that one. Then I knew we just had to pass that camp, you know, with the lake. You know, what was it called again? You mean Camp Crystal Lake? Yep, that's the one. Once we did that, I knew we'd be on the right street. There's the house right there. The last house on the left. What's the name of the street again? You mean Elm Street? Yeah, that's it. Okay, now, let's get into our costumes before we get to the door. I bet the people in that house are going to freak when they see our monster outfits. Here, let me help you slip this over your head. Uh, Arms up! Good. Okay, there. The perfect cookie monster. Me want cookie. You think me should change email address to melikecookie at gmail.com? Uh, let's not get carried away there, Cookie Monster. Just keep your email address the same at attipscast at gmail.com. Now, how do I look? I'm not sure I like this Elmo costume. Elmo look good enough to eat. 
You ready? Elmo loves parties. Hey, everyone. Trick or treat and happy Halloween.